In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020. The Church celebrates the Feast of St. Victor I, Pope and Martyr. You are welcome to Catholic Meditation. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who chose St. Victor to preside over your whole people and benefit them by word and example, keep safe, we pray, by his intercession, the shepherds of your church along with the flocks entrusted to their care and direct them in the way of eternal salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 14, verses 17 to 22. The Gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 35 to 43. I read from the Gospel. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will speak to you in parables. Unfold what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then, leaving the crowds, he went to the house and his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable about the Daniel in the field. He said in reply, The sower of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the subjects of the kingdom. The Daniel, the subjects of the evil one. The enemy who sowed it, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. Well then, just as the Daniel is gathered up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of falling and all who do evil, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then the upright will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Anyone who has ears should listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Coming again, come on, come on, come on again. 
Make yourself a good subject of the kingdom. Make yourself a good subject of the kingdom. Dear friends, today's gospel passage is an explanation of the parable of the Daniel in the field. Daniel is a kind of grass that grows among planted crops. Daniel choke the real crops thereby, making their growth retarded. This parable is somewhat similar to the parable of the sower, but for the fact that in the parable of the sower, the seed is the word of God. But both parables talk about sowing seed, growing, and producing a rich harvest. In this particular parable, the parable of the Daniel in the field, Six aspects are involved. The first is the field, which is the world. The second, the good seed, who are the subjects of the kingdom. The third, the Daniel, who are the subjects of the evil one. The fourth, the enemy, who is the devil. The fifth, the harvest, which is the end of the world, judgment day. And six, the reapers, who are the angels. The first thing is, the parable brings to our knowledge the fact that God is at work with doing good, planting goodness in people's hearts, sowing good seed. The devil, too, at the same time, is at work doing evil, planting Daniel. The field that is the world is made up of good seed planted by God, who are God's good people, the children of the kingdom. While the children of God are about their activities trying to do good, the enemy, the devil, moves around sowing Daniel, agents of hate and evil. The question is, who made the bad people? Were they born bad? Today's parable gives an answer. No. God planted us all. That is, he made us all and we are good. But the devil begins to sow seeds that grow up to destroy the goodness of the good. Those seeds that the devil sows are hate, anger, jealousy, lust, greed, selfishness, covetousness, laziness, wickedness. Dear God's good people, when we allow these evil seeds to choke us, they begin to grow like Daniel in our lives and they transform us from God's good people, children of the kingdom, to evil children of the devil and members of the kingdom of darkness. Watch out, therefore, for these qualities, beloved. Watch out. They are the Daniel the devil is planting in your life. When you begin to realize that you have these qualities, anger, hate, jealousy, lust, greed, selfishness, covetousness, laziness, wickedness, and the many others, the devil is sowing Daniel in your life. The greatest difficulty is these two, that is the good and the bad people, are growing together in the world and it is difficult to distinguish one from the other. Sometimes, we are tempted to think that when we talk about bad people, it is the other one, thereby liberating myself and inviting God to strike and destroy the evildoers. But the truth is, we sometimes exhibit bad qualities too. This is what makes it difficult to distinguish between the good and the bad, because sometimes those trying to be good also fall short. Good people sometimes do bad acts. Aren't Christians also guilty of many evil acts? So you see why Jesus is right to say, let both of them grow till the end, because it is difficult to distinguish the good from the bad. A man may appear to be good when truly he is not, 
and another may appear to be bad when in truth they are good. Calling destruction from God, we should not forget that we may also be swept as well. So Jesus says, let both of them grow till the end. So in the world, we find goodness growing alongside badness. For this reason, God says both should be left to grow till the end. That is, till judgment day. That is when the truly good will be known and will be separated from the bad. As we say, it is at the end that the actor of the film is known. A second reason why God leaves all to grow till the end is because he gives room for the possibility of change and conversion. He wants us to use the time, the long time he gives us to be converted. God does not desire the death of the sinner, rather that he be converted. He changes his life and he lives. But we rather feel that we have much time and we continue and remain in our evil, thinking perhaps God is so helpless or perhaps he is so stupid or cannot control the world or has no power over evil and oh, we think we have much time till we die in our sins. So leaving all to grow together till the end is giving a possibility for conversion. At the end, that is at judgment, it is God who will do the separation of the good from the evil. This is work to be done by God, not man. So those who spend their time judging others, condemning and classifying some as material for hell, you are not God's lawyer. No one has employed you to do that. Don't do God's work. Today's parable says it is God at the end who will do that work, not you. So you should rather take your time and focus on yourself that at the end you may be found among the good on the last day. That should be your work, beloved. Not to focus on others' lives, writing report cards for them. God will not read your report card. Focus on yourself and how to make yourself good seed at the end. If not, you may also be gathered like the bad seed and thrown out. So then, dear friend, there shall be a great separation at the end. Let us remember this. There shall be judgment. What are you doing to make yourself good seed? What are you doing to eliminate all the Daniel that the devil is sowing in your life? Are you sure you shall pass God's screening test? Or will you be among the Daniel to be thrown out? You still have time to switch over. Today is the day. Now is the time. Tomorrow may be too late. St. Victor, whose feast we celebrate today, is an African by birth. And he was elected Pope in the year 189. During his pontificate, which lasted until 198, he settled the controversy over the date of Easter. In fact, while the Western Church used to celebrate Easter on Sunday, the Eastern Church would celebrate it on 14 Nisan, whatever the day of the week. After much consultation and discussion, the decision was taken to celebrate it on Sunday throughout the Church. He was the first Pope from Africa. Through his intercession, may we be devoted in making ourselves good seed and good subjects for God's kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.